data to back up uh, you know uh, there is uh, the applicant application trends survey 2020 from none other than the graduate management admission council gmac found that 67 percent uh, of more than 1,000 business schools globally saw a relative increase in application volume in 2020 as opposed to 2019, when only 41% saw such growth. In fact, it goes on to say that nearly 40% of the schools saw a significant increase of over 25% or more in the number of MBA applications. Now, this is actually in the year 2021 when there was still uncertainty when uh, you know COVID will uh, be ending or the world will be recovering from COVID. While we have opened up as a university and we are starting our physical classes in the next several days, the reality is uh, many companies, corporations, business enterprises, organizations, they are all uh, recovering from uh, COVID-19. Uh, significant impact and adverse implications of this uh, uh, at least over a two year long pandemic and the resultant consequences with regard to job losses as well as business losses uh, is going to take some more time and there is no better time than bright young people to get into a university uh, upskill themselves upgrade themselves develop new knowledge perspectives and skills with a view to preparing themselves better for entering into the world of jobs and various professions. So I want to personally take this moment to congratulate each one of you for taking the decision to join the graduate school, the business school now in 2022. And I am reasonably confident that by 2024, when you will be graduating, the world will not only be a different place more positively, but we would have significantly moved away from the adverse impact of the pandemic itself. Uh, let me give you a brief background of myself. Um, I am a lawyer by training. I did my undergrad degree uh, in BCom from Loyola College Madras, did my law degree from the Campus Law Center Faculty of Law, University of Delhi, after which I was a Rhodes Scholar at the University of Oxford, where I did my master's in law. Then I did another master's in law from Harvard Law School in the United States. I practiced law in New York and taught law in uh, Tokyo and Hong Kong for many years, um, after which I did something that uh, most uh, young people were reluctant to do and uh, something that uh, most uh, businesses are encouraged to do, which is to be a bit more entrepreneurial in relation to creating something. Now, of course, I didn't create a business. Um, I didn't have the uh, kind of knowledge or perspectives or skills to create a business that will add more wealth. But I would like to believe that I embarked on a journey to create something even more important, which is to, uh, you know, build the next generation of young people and their lives and futures and careers. Um, I wrote a paper entitled Establishing India's First Global University, got to meet with an Indian benefactor by name Naveen Jindal in the year 2006 and spent over a year persuading Mr. Jindal to do three things. One, to make a substantial financial investment to build a world-class university, to second, to do it in a not-for-profit manner, and third, to let me have the academic freedom and autonomy and independence to build a world-class university in India. By late 2007, Mr. Jindal agreed to all of that and invited me from uh, to move from Hong Kong to India, and I did that and essentially began the journey of uh, creating this university since 2008. Uh, I don't want to bore you with the longer story, but the shorter story is that sometime in January 2009, the government of Haryana passed the legislation establishing OP Jindal Global University as the first private university in the state of Haryana. Soon after, we began the construction of campus, recruitment of faculty, admission of students, and pretty much we did all of that in six months. And uh, here we are on 30th September 2009, we began the first academic session of the first school of the University Jindal Global Law School with only 112 students, 10 faculty members, four classrooms, uh, housing for those 100 students, and we began our journey. It was a very modest beginning. Uh, little did we thought that uh, that journey that we began over 12 years ago will bring us to where we are. In 2010, we started the Jindal Global Business School, and year on year since then, we've established new schools 
new programs and created new opportunities, expanded our schools, programs, student profile, faculty, and of course, research centers, and expanded the campus, including the built-up area. I'm happy to report to you that today we have 12 different schools in law, business, international affairs, public policy, liberal arts, journalism, architecture, banking and finance, environment and sustainability, psychology and counseling, languages and literature, and the 12th school, the Jindal School of Public Health and Human Development. We've also expanded our various program offerings into undergraduate, postgraduate, master's, PhD. Uh, along the way, these 12 years have also led to a significant expansion in the campus. We are now located in a nearly 100-acre campus with over 3 million square feet of built-up space, all our students living in one community. We have now nearly 8,000 students, so nearly 1,000 full-time faculty members, and these 12 schools are interdisciplinary in nature, and each of which are contributing in its own manner. The second school of the university, the Jindal Global Business School, also began in a very modest manner in the year 2010, and since then has made an extraordinary imprint on the entire world of higher education in India, but also in the world of business schools. Let me tell you what is so special about the Jindal Global Business School. First, the, the Jindal Global Business School is part of a larger university system. If you look at the world's best business schools, they are to a large extent located in comprehensive, multidisciplinary universities. Uh, you look at Harvard Business School, it's part of Harvard University. You look at uh, the Wharton uh, School, it is part of the University of Pennsylvania. If you look at uh, Kellogg, which is part of Northwestern University. If you look at uh, um, Stern, it's part of New York University. Uh, every major business school, barring uh, INSEAD, for example, uh, is part of a larger university from NUS to SMU. Uh, you know, you just name it, they are all part of a larger university. So we pride in the fact that Jindal Global Business School is located as a part of OP Jindal Global University, which is a multidisciplinary research oriented university. The second aspect of Jindal Global Business School is its strong commitment to recruiting the most outstanding people as its faculty. The faculty members of Jindal Global Business School, as you will see from our website, are outstanding scholars, researchers, people with uh, excellent academic qualifications, professional experience, research interests, made significant uh, you know, contributions in their own profession, and have chosen to come into academia as a matter of choice and not because they couldn't do anything better. Uh, in fact, the tragedy of larger part of Indian academia is the fact that the best and the brightest do not come into academic institutions. They end up choosing other professions, including the corporate careers for their uh, you know, advancement of their own career interests. But we are very fortunate at the Indian Global Business School to have been able to attract some of the finest minds who had other options in life, but have chosen to be in academia contributing to teaching and research. The third aspect of our business school is our strong commitment to research. The Jindal Global Business School is a very compelling research-driven institution, which not only has a number of research centers where the students are contributing, but the faculty members are uh, leading researchers in their respective fields. This research has been published widely and acclaimed widely around the world, and they have reached a unique standard in the world of academic research in which some of the finest articles in the form of Scopus publications have been published by the faculty members of Jindal Global Business School. The fourth aspect of the Jindal Global Business School is its strong commitment to uh, an, a pedagogy that is not only interdisciplinary in nature, but that also has a strong focus on experiential learning. In a way, the opportunities that the students get is not only limited to Jindal Global Business School, but are able to take courses in our law school, in our public policy school, in our banking and finance school, in our international affairs school, in other schools of JGU, so that the students of Jindal Global Business School, including the MBA program, are immensely benefited by what they, what they can get out of this experience and that transcends the study of a typical business school. That's the fourth and very important aspect of Jindal Global Business School, which is it is intrinsically interdisciplinary in nature. 
The fifth aspect of the Jindal Global Business School is a strong commitment to internationalization. The Jindal Global Business School has established outstanding collaborations with universities and business schools around the world. The school offers opportunities to pursue many programs in different parts of the world, including student exchange programs, dual degree programs, short-term study abroad programs, and other forms of immersion programs, which I believe could be a transformative experience. One of the shining uh, glories of this particular initiative is a partnership that the Jindal Global Business School has forged with the Wharton School at the University of Pennsylvania, where our MBA students have an opportunity to pursue a, a certificate program, which also offers credits, which get translated into academic credits that are reflected in the transcript of our students when they graduate out of Jindal Global Business School. And that's the fifth aspect of the Jindal Global Business School. The sixth aspect of Jindal Global Business School is its ability to provide guidance as well as career support for our students through the Office of Career Services that is located within the university. This means that our students have an opportunity not only to be able to pursue internship semester after semester, which are guaranteed by the university and the business school, but also have an opportunity to interact with many organizations, firms, and other employers who are brought together to be able to meet with our students. We have always maintained that we do not guarantee jobs. That's not what uh, we as an institution do. Neither the Jindal Global Business School guarantees jobs, but what we guarantee is a high quality education that would empower our students to be able to receive the kind of opportunities in the form of career development and the Office of Career Services precisely does this for our students. And that is the sixth aspect of the Jindal Global Business School. The seventh aspect of Jindal Global Business School is a strong commitment to creating an intellectually vibrant environment through conferences, lectures, workshops, seminars, and other type of events that transcends the in-class experience of our students. While the in-class experience is important and indeed transformative and inspiring for our students, the reality is our students learn from what happens outside the classroom through other initiatives that the Jindal Global Business School promotes. And that is something which the students of MBA value the most. The eighth aspect of our uh, institution, the Jindal Global Business School, is its strong commitment to creating opportunities for uh, innovation, including entrepreneurship. I strongly believe that an entrepreneurship uh, and innovation culture need to be built in the campuses of our country. And one of the ways by which the Jindal Global Business School does is to provide opportunities for students to share ideas, including developing an incubator system that will enable our students to bounce ideas about future business opportunities, business possibilities, and hopefully use the campus experience to create networks across the country and even around the world, not only limited to the Jindal Global Business School students, but also students across other schools. I'm sure some of my other colleagues would share with you that already we have seen a situation where the students of Jindal Global Business School have partnered with the students of Jindal Global Law School the School of International Affairs and other such schools to create new business opportunities. And the campus became a, 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 an ecosystem for them to promote new business and entrepreneurial uh, initiatives. That's the you know, uh, eighth aspect of Jindal Global Business School. The ninth aspect of Jindal Global Business School is part of a university setting in which we promote uh, sports extracurricular activities, including music, theater, and drama. Uh, in fact, um, as we progress in our professional education, particularly graduate education, we tend to ignore the importance of these finer dimensions of our own life, which I believe is absolutely critical, regardless of the fact that whether you become an investment banker or a consultant in a major corporation or a company, or even create businesses that become CEOs and chairpersons of your companies and organizations, one of the things that I'm sure you will cherish as you grow older and recognize the importance of having a holistic personality is to have other uh, experiences 
uh, other aspects to your own life beyond work. And that's exactly what a good campus experience does. The state-of-the-art, world-class infrastructure that OP Jindal Global University offers to the students of Jindal Global Business School enable our students to actively participate in sports and other extracurricular activities, including music, theater, dance, and drama. There are over 25 student-run societies which the students of Jindal Global Business School experience as they are part of that initiative as well. The last aspect of our university, I believe, and that is something so connected to the idea of business school, is our commitment to promoting excellence. This commitment to promoting excellence in everything you, we do is part of an effort to build a world-class business school. As you think in terms of where you want to study, uh, one of the things that you ought to be conscious of is that how does the university, uh, you know, benchmark itself with universities around the world and universities and institutions in India. If I were to identify some of the key milestones that OP Jindal Global University and Jindal Global Business School has attained is the fact that we have been now ranked consistently as India's first ranked private university by the QS World University Rankings. Consistently, our other schools have also been ranked uh, very high. Uh, but more importantly, we have been given the status of an institution of eminence by the government of India, which is the testimonial to the overall commitment to excellence that all our schools, and in particular the Jindal Global Business School, fosters. So, in a way, I want to say that uh, uh, for all those students and parents who are uh, here today uh, and are discussing and thinking about your opportunity that has been presented to you uh, to join the Jindal Global Business School. All I can say is, uh, when I was growing up in India, uh, thinking about higher education, I wish universities like Jindal were there. It wasn't there. Uh, as somebody who had helped in the creation of it, I can say with the full sense of responsibility that the opportunity to be educated at OP Jindal Global University is a lifetime uh, opportunity, a transformative opportunity, which I believe is going to create new, uh, you know, uh, ways of thinking, new ways of doing, and most importantly, bring out the best in you and help you achieve your fullest potential and fulfill your dreams and aspirations. With those words, I want to stop here. Uh, I know that there are others, including the dean of our business school, who are going to speak, but I will have another seven minutes to take up a few questions before I leave. So, Vikram, I want to open it up. And uh, if there's any question from our, um, you know, uh, new students, I'm happy to take up as I have another engagement at seven o'clock. Thank you, Raj, sir. Uh, students, I would request you, let's have the best of the time and the opportunity which has been given to you. We have seven minutes, so do not hesitate to unmute yourself, switch on your camera. You have the backbone of the university speaking in front of you. And what Raj sir did not mention about him is, and what we all in Jindal is proud of is, he is the youngest vice chancellor in the history of the India. Imagine at an age of 34, when we all look for something else, he became the vice chancellor. We are young. We are growing and that is what makes us different from everyone. So please unmute yourself. Do not hesitate if you have anything to ask. Yeah, because no, Raj, sir, any, any question is fine. Please feel free to ask. Uh, hello, hello, sir. Hello, everybody. So, sir, as you have discussed... That's a Ribu, important... Ribu Pajni. Is that Ribu yes, Pajni? Yes. All right, Ribu, go ahead. So you have discussed all the you know important points just now in your speech, and I'm really impressed with the institution and you know everything. So just one question: When will the course start, and will it be online or offline? Oh, uh, so Ribu, uh, we have already announced this uh, very well. Uh, so our we are already opening the campus uh, from first of March for all our existing students, and of course for the new batch of students who are enrolled in the MBA program. Our uh, new academic session will begin on 1st of August. And of course, you will come into the campus several days before. And of course, it is going to be physical 
and not online. Right, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. We are all pretty much tired of online, uh, Vibhu. So let's get let's get you all into campus. Yes, sir. That's what I was thinking. So that's why I asked. Sure. So I have a question. Uh, I'm Prasang. My name is Prasanga. Uh, right now I'm driving. That's why I cannot switch on my camera. No problem, uh, Prasanga. Yeah. So uh, now I have about uh, 20 years experience in Dubai as a corporate banker and I have my uh, certifications in finance and corporate banking. So will I be able, uh, eligible to follow this course, which I'm very keen to do? Well, absolutely. Uh, I have no doubt about the fact that uh, you will be most suited to pursue the course. Um, yeah. So long as you are prepared to subject yourself to be part of a campus ecosystem, because I realize that you come with vast experience, but then at the end of the day, you will be living and studying in a campus ecosystem. Uh, you know, that's something which is something which you should be conscious of. Uh, and that has a great opportunity for you to relive your uh, old campus experiences. Uh, if you are prepared to do that, I am sure academically and intellectually, you will be richly benefited by it. And I also want to say that you will also make a significant contribution to the classroom experience with the with the, with what you have you would have brought uh, into the classroom itself. So absolutely, and I think uh, uh, there are uh, not a lot. I will confess that there are uh, definitely every year we admit students who come with uh, some years of experience in different sectors. Then they add significant value to the entire. Uh, classroom, uh, you know, situation within the business school. Yeah, so I've been trying to reach somebody uh, in the you know university uh, to get more details, and I've I've been trying to uh, register myself online, which I've faced some uh, difficulties. So Prasanga, but Prasanga, yeah. just now Vikram Tomar, he is the director of admissions at the Jindal Global Business School, and actually can be a single point contact for you. He will send you his email ID through the chat box. And please write to him. Of course, you are That's feel great. free to write to Mayank Dondial, the dean of our business school. Uh, but um, uh, Vikram, I think you may want to get on a call uh, with Prasanka because you can give some more information yeah. about the program and the options and opportunities. It, in, fact, that, numbers, yeah. in fact, why I chose uh, OP Jindal is because uh, we have the Jindal uh, so company here in Abu Dhabi. I've had that relationship. I think if the Oh, organization culture culture is amazing. So I thought well, well, I'm when happy I saw this university, that. yeah, when I saw the university immediately, I thought I should look at the courses and I so and this if you're coming yeah. to if you're coming to Delhi anytime in the near future, do let us know and we'll be happy yeah. to organize a visit, not just for Prasanga, but anybody else. You are most welcome to come to campus because uh, uh, I think it's uh, it's one thing to hear and watch, but another thing to see and be there. Yeah. So please feel free to visit Yes, definitely. Once, I, once I'm enrolled, definitely I'll pay a visit. Thank yeah, you, sir. Yeah. I'll just, uh, Vikram, maybe you can just uh, type in your email ID and phone number so that you know everyone gets to know probably some of them already know, but it might be good. Yeah. Any other question? Sir, I have a question. Please. So you talked about your the international partnerships with different... Uh, who is this? Can I? Can you please introduce yourself and maybe even show your face? Sir, I'm Kushal Kangya, sir. Okay. All right. So, so you talked about the international partnerships of your college and the student exchanges that you do and the dual degrees. So I have sure. a question that does it... Uh, how does it help a student... Uh, the student exchanges during the course and how does it help in you know, uh, the placements that you, uh, a student might attain uh, once the... Okay, great great question, Kushal. So, Kushal, first of all, I think um, uh, one of the reasons why a person does an MBA program is not only to experience what is already available in the books, but also to gain new perspectives as a part of the experience, meet new and interesting people and to engage in conversations that may not happen if you are not part of an, a good academic institution. So what a, an, a good exchange program does, or even an immersion program or a study abroad program at Wharton does is, it kind of 
uh, pushes the boundaries of knowledge, challenges you in terms of what you are already aware of and helps you gain new knowledge and new perspectives. As far as its uh, uh, outcomes uh, in terms of uh, the job is concerned, I would like to believe that every recruiter is looking for people who have unique experiences, who are not uh, you know, confined to a more traditional thought process, who are able to go beyond the call of duty when it comes to doing what they have done, who are prepared to share uh, their own life's experiences beyond what they have learned in a classroom, in an institution. So we, and I think it's also important to mention that we are increasingly living in a global and interdependent world. Uh, if there's one thing that COVID-19 has taught us is the kind of uh, how a tragedy of this kind can affect the entire world with no exception, developed and developing countries together. Uh, and I think uh, the next one, which we are all going to face, is the, the crisis of climate change and the environmental uh, disasters that also will be global in nature and we are our own uh, ability to uh, you know uh, resist and to confront that challenge will require us to understand principles of sustainability and commit ourselves to fulfilling the sustainable development goals all this means is that a bright mba student of the future is expected to be a well rounded holistic interdisciplinarily engaged person who has life's experiences that transcend what one studies in one particular institution or for that matter, one particular society. It's another matter that we have brought all of that to Jindal itself. And you can very much not do any of these things and experience an international education being here. We have just provided additional value added opportunities for those who may be interested in some of those opportunities. Does that answer your question, Kushan? Yes, sir. So, so just just one little more question, adding to the placement. Uh, sure. Uh, uh, <clears throat> sir, I, I read about the, the placement program that your university offers, that the school offers, and it has had a, about a 9 lakh average package in the 2020. So do you have any vision as to where do you see that package going by the 2024 or 2025 or any estimate? So, Kushal, uh, this is a very, uh, what you call, specific question. I'm going to, uh, in the, I, I will leave shortly, but I will definitely request the Dean of Jindal Global Business School, Professor Mayank Dandial, to answer that question. Um, all I can say is that, uh, uh, listen, uh, while I do believe that each student's aspiration to uh, earn a significant amount of money, including having high packages, is a legitimate aspiration. Uh, it's also equally important to be able to develop uh, skill sets and knowledge to pursue a long-term meaningful career in business. Uh, we do that, and in that process, students gain that um, you know perspective. But uh, I'm sure the dean of Jindal Global Business School, Professor Mayank, uh, during his interaction with you, will talk to you more about how we can empower our students to be able to become more competitive when it comes to the packages that they are uh, getting. Uh, by the way, uh, as a law professor and a lawyer, I'm always very uncomfortable to talk about packages because most of my life I was teaching uh, you know, human rights and I've been an academic. And that's the last thing that most academics, that to uh, uh, an academic who works in the field of constitutional law and uh, uh, human rights law uh, does. But I do recognize that uh, it's a very legitimate and uh, understandable aspiration for business students. And I will leave it to the dean of the business school to respond to that question in a more detailed manner. Thank you, sir. Do we have any more questions? Because Dr. Raj has to join another meeting. So if in case you have any questions so there please. is a question from nancy belodia is asking is there any foreign visit for internship so nancy the the uh, internship programs are of course across the country there are a couple of internships which are also global in nature but the immersion program and the study abroad program including the wharton program is clearly based out of other countries in the world 
Okay, thank you, sir. Pleasure, Nancy. All right. Uh, uh, <clears throat> please, sir. Please continue. Uh, so I will then take leave uh, to with all of you, and uh, it's a pleasure to say hello to you. Uh, most of you, quite understandably, um, have not switched on your video. Now I must uh, close by saying that I always thought this is a problem with. Uh, uh, you know, seventh grade students. My daughter is in ninth grade, and my son is in twelfth uh, grade, and they always uh, end up in schools where the teacher is uh, calling their names. And most of the time, my son or daughter is not even there. So I was hoping that the business school students, particularly the MBA program, will all be switched on with your video, uh, neatly suited, and ready to go for it. But I'm happy that the student in you is live and kicking. And uh, I look forward to seeing you in person when you all uh, move into the campus uh, in August uh, 2022. Thank you. And take care. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Bye, my uncle. Thank Bye, you, sir. Bye, uh, Bye, sir. Bye, Raj. Thank you very much. <clears throat> so that was our vice chancellor, the backbone of the university. and. Again, I would like to request all of you who are listening to us, see, in all the limited space we have, we are all here for you. The place where you are today, me, Professor Mayan, Professor Burjesh, we have experienced the same phase in our life almost two decades before, when we were graduating. You already have the profile of the people who are there talking to you, and definitely more the options, more is the confusion. I personally, I have been in higher education for last 20 years when I completed MBA in year 2003 and I decided to enter into the field of higher education, not as a teacher, but into the admissions department. And that was a time when the private universities culture was coming up in India. And I chose, I got my first job at ICFI Business School Hyderabad. I worked with ICFAI University. I was taking care of the IBS brand in terms of admissions for almost five and a half years. After that, I joined, I got another offer. Again, it was in education and I joined an institution which was called as, or which is called as UPES Dehradun, which is University of Petroleum and Energy Studies. I worked there for almost more than eight years. And for last six years, I'm working with OP Jindal University. And not because I am the director of the institution, I would say anything in terms of praise, but let me tell you friends, I'm calling you friends because I can correlate what goes in the mind of a student and what goes in the mind of a teacher because I have been very closely monitoring all these two aspects and trying to make a balance. So do not hesitate to ask questions, switch on your cameras, because we are all here for you. If you do not switch, ask questions, we would be made to believe that everything is all clear to you. It all depends whether it is all clear as a crude oil or it is all clear as a crystal. Whether you join Jindal Global Business School or you don't join Jindal Global Business School, definitely you will be joining somewhere or the other. And that is a million dollar question because you are investing two years of your precious life. These two years will never come back to you. You should be informed. Where you want to invest your next two years in MBA will determine your professional journey for the next 40, 50 years. And it is very important to be confused now than to be confused at an age of 25 where you do not have a chance to take a U-turn. With that, I would now like to invite our Dean, Professor Mayank, and he would be there along with my colleague, Professor Brijesh. And once again, same request, do not hesitate. Switch on your cameras. At least I can see Swaraj. Thanks. <clears throat> Ankur, Keshav. When you will go for a job, you do not have that option to do so. 
Beggars are not choosers in life. You have interacted with me before. Please mute uh, yourself uh, if in case somebody has unmuted. Two things which I want to specifically tell before Professor Mayank enters into the discussion with you. If you have already been with the interview process of Jindal, if you would have already got an admission at Jindal, there were two things which as an MBA student, you would have never thought of happening with you. Now, let me tell you what were those two things, if probably you have forgot. First thing was, you would have never expected an email to come to you notifying who is your interviewer. Before your interview, I made sure that the interviewer profile reaches to all of you. Just before one day of your interview, you all would have received a personal WhatsApp message from my side before the interview. You would have never thought of that a direct message from the director of admissions would come to you. This is not something as a marketing exercise or a stunt. Imagine how much time and energy I invest personally on you. And I'm not doing anything for charity, let me tell you. I'm a very clear-cut, straightforward person. You are looking for a good college. I am looking for a good student. But what is the definition of good? For you, when I was a student like you, we were made to believe that a good person is one who gets 90 or 95 percentile in CAT. Or if you have an NMAT score of 240, 230. And the society make us believe that if I am having a score of, let's say, 180, 190, probably there is nothing left for you in life. Because every student is made to believe that you are evaluated on the basis of a sign which is called as percentage. A percentage sign is not a healthy sign to determine your professional success. Nobody will ask you during your job interview that how much score you got in quants or logical reasoning while you appeared for an entrance exam. What is looked into is your personality, your communication, your confidence. Are you able to handle risk? Are you a team player? These are the things which are looked into job, which are looked into businesses, if, which are looked into being an entrepreneur. And that makes a person. Having watched the higher education for 20 years, imagine most of you would have born after 2000. By that time, imagine what my experience is. And that is why I just try to do little, little things to connect the dots. We all have certain expectations. You have certain dreams. You would be definitely looking forward because when I completed MBA, I did have this question in mind. And that was a very basic question that once I complete my study, I should have a decent job. And there is no harm in it. But I always tell my students before performance, before placement, there comes performance. I feel very sad when students come to me over a call or even face-to-face -face interaction and then they say, sir, how much scholarship can I get if I have 95% in CAT? Imagine where the mindset has gone. And you know, my reply is, have I given you an offer? No, I haven't selected you yet. At least have a right attitude. We do have so much of touch with the industry and where the current generation is lacking is the attitude. And that is why what JGU and JGBS does is something very remarkable because you are pursuing a management education in a university driven campus. You are not studying in a B school 
where you are only interacting with students of your own you have more than 200 electives to choose from law from public policy from liberal arts to banking and finance and imagine that is what an mba does you may be an mba but you have to interact with a colleague who is a lawyer who is a chartered accountant who is an engineer and you cannot negate his suggestions because you do not have that domain background mba is a very big canvas don't look your life from a minuscule word which is placement how many jobs you want you just want one seat and before that you should focus on what you need to do how you need to develop your skills in the next 2 years to be able to get that offer when we all started with the pandemic in 2020 many students were hesitant should they do an mba or not and i am very happy and i am very proud to say six of my students currently are pursuing their study abroad opportunities in uk and france there are two girls who are there currently pursuing their ms it's a lifetime investment which you all are doing but evaluate your options do not get confused and do not restrict yourself from asking questions i will stop because i have professor mayank as a dean he would like to share what is our expectation from you we want you to listen to our expectation you should know right now where you have to channelize your energy how you have to develop the skills which you probably do not have so that tomorrow when you come to jgbs you are not alone you are my future ambassador and i along with my colleagues will never give any opportunity to not help you develop as a overall all rounded person over to you mayank thank you for uh, allowing me this time but i get a little emotional because the place where they are are i was and we all were there but yes now it is all for you so you thank you very much mind. thank you very much vikram uh, you know uh, today vikram is all charged up the markets have rebounded today both the nifty and the sensex and that clearly has a little effect on you know vikram but uh, by the way i think you know what he was uh, talking about had a lot of sense by the way uh, you know welcome all uh, to the session i can see your faces now so that's a welcome change earlier you know uh, the cameras were not on so it's always good if uh, you know we can see each other's faces so very good evening to all of you who join us today for this mba leadership series uh, my name is mayang dhondial and i'm the dean of uh, jindal global business school at op jindal global university I warmly welcome you all to this uh, you know session on the two year MBA program uh, from JGBS. Now uh, as professor Raj and Vikram were also saying before JGBS is the second largest school of JGU which obviously is India's number one ranked private university and also India's premier research driven school. Uh, and as part of our vision of being a globally acclaimed business school uh, developing transformative ideas and people I'm glad to tell you that your school is making rapid strides uh, towards excellence, uh, and you know I would like you to also compare it to you know the the other B schools in the country. So you know we we have a faculty base of around 110 full time faculty members. We run 11 different programs across UG postgraduate, PhD, including the two year MBA, of course. Uh, our faculty members have degrees from world's leading business schools and universities including of course uh, the iims and the iits in india uh, but also for example the university of california in los angeles uh, new york university uh, penn state university university of manchester uk uh, university of melbourne in australia technological university dublin in ireland so from universities in us europe australia of course you know the top institutes in india uh, including the iims and iits you'll be also happy to note that jgps faculty members have published more than 200 uh, scopus index papers in the year 2021 uh, many of them of course indexed in the prestigious abdc uh, you know uh, an abs list now this remarkable achievement of course 
uh, demonstrates the ardent dedication of the faculty members of Jindal Global Business School uh, contributing to the evolution of cutting edge management knowledge. And that means that, you know, you're also getting the latest management know-how, uh, you know, in the world of uh, management education. Uh, JGBS also offers you an unparalleled international exposure. The B-School has 80 plus partnerships in 50 plus countries across five continents. Uh, think of ourselves both at the university school level as a gateway to the world. And that's for a reason. So, you know, as you know, we have our name, middle name is global, right? So uh, we have partnership with, uh, you know, big names, uh, you know, in like academics, including the Wharton Business School, uh, the Thunderbird School of Global Management, the Queen Mary University of London, University of New Brunswick in Canada, UT Dallas, uh, Deakin University in Australia, Queen's University in Ireland. So we give you a lot of opportunity. Of course, you know, these opportunities differ from program to program, just to be sure. Uh, but, you know, as part of the two-year MBA program, you get a lot of these opportunities. Uh, and that gives you, you know, uh, opportunities to travel and, you know, of course, learn from some of the world's top B schools and universities. So I would like to congratulate you on getting admitted to our world-class two-year MBA program, uh, which I'm sure will give wings, uh, you know, to your career and aspirations. But I welcome you to our MBA program. I would also like to discuss a bit about, you know, how you can get the maximum from this MBA program, right? I mean, and to do that, you must understand why MBAs are greatly valued in organization. I mean, you know, there is some wow factor and organizations are looking for and to spend the top dollar for MBAs. And I don't know whether you have given it a thought because, you know, that clearly, you know, relates very closely to your career success. All of you, I'm sure, have, you know, career aspirations. You want to make big in the world of corporate, right? I mean, uh, and, you know, you need to understand why MBAs are so valuable. Now, let me try to, you know, explain this given the limited time, of course, you know, using an example so that, you know, it gets ingrained in your, uh, in your uh, memory, right? Now, you must have heard about the recent return of Indian Airlines, right, back to the Tata Group. And this move was largely, largely, I mean, welcomed by the masses, a huge show of support, uh, you know, in social media. Uh, like a lot of the people probably, you know, wanted the service standards of Indian Airlines to improve. So perhaps, you know, that's why they were showing support. But Generally speaking, I think there is a lot of goodwill about Tatas and the house of Tatas, right? So uh, there is a very strong sort of brand connect, brand equity, especially in the Indian context. And if you look at the Tata group, right? I mean, you know, they've set up big names, right? I mean, they not only big names, you know, most of these companies were actually, you know, the first companies in their, you know, uh, in the industry. You look at the first software company, you know, uh, one of the first software companies, definitely one of the first car companies in India, one of the first five star hotels in India, uh, you know, uh, uh, and of course, the airlines business. So and all these businesses under the Tata group, they're still there. Right. Uh, uh, I mean, if you talk about the first, uh, you know, Tata car company, it was set up way back, I think, in 1940s, 1945, I think. Right. Somewhere around that. And still there and going very strong, right? Uh, the Tata Motors, of course, right? And you need to understand why that might be the case, which is not the case with every big industrial house. So from Tata Salt to Titan to Tata Consultancy Services, Tata brands evoke respect and love. I mean, you know, these brands are built to last. So as MBA students, you know, you need to understand what are the key reasons for this sustainability, for this love, for this respect among the Indian masses, right? And of course, there are multiple things. It's, a, it's not that, you know, it's pretty complex, right? But one of the key aspects, perhaps, is, you know, the sustainability, okay? And if you would like to learn something about it, you know, in your careers, when obviously, you know, you're doing this, this MBA as part of your uh, you know, meeting your career aspirational, right? Uh, and your career goals, right? So if you, you want to take a lesson out of it, it's about sustainability, about your career, about your life. You need to have a mindset which is long-term. So these startup brands, you know, have, have been around for a long, long while. And all of them, you know, have a very solid presence from software to salt to, you know, as I said, the airlines, of course, the, the, the automobile company, 
And when you're thinking about sustainability, when you're thinking about long term in your career, it's, you know, it's about a mindset thing. Now, of course, everybody will tell you about MBAs, about skills and matching those skills to what the industry needs. And that, of course, is very important. There is absolutely no doubt about it. I mean, you know, that is something which is at the very core of, you know, MBA, our curriculum is, of course, set accordingly, uh, you know, the way the different subjects that we, you know, let you do the different electives. But in terms of the life skills, okay, on top of that, it's about a mindset issue. It's about the fact that you want to be there for the long term. And the thing, one of the things, you know, one of the things, there are many things, right? So one of the things you can learn from the Tata brand is about long term, about sustainability. And when you have that mindset of long term career, you will automatically gear yourself to start contributing positively to the organization that you work for, right? Because you want to be long-term, right? You don't want to be, you know, short-term player. You want to stay for long-term. And when you want to stay for long-term, you'll think that way. And when you think that way, you start automatically, A, making sure that you keep on contributing to the organization in a positive way, right? And that's, that's a mindset thing, right? Uh, many a times, MBA grads think about, and you know that's true for many you know industries across different sort of you know career choices that you keep on switching from one place to another, right? And you know I'm not going to say anything about it, but what I'm saying is, you know, sustainability and long term is very important. So have that mindset. Uh, the other important you know reason why people want to do MBA, of course, as part of the career success. And learning beyond the boundaries, which is the topic of this particular, you know, talk, it's you know, what are the things that that make your career a success? And many things, many people will tell you many different things, right? But actually, if you think about it, career success and the factors, the independent variables that lead to career success, they're not very complex. It's actually very simple. Okay, if you look at it, it's not even changed over many decades. Right. And people generally won't tell you that. Right. Now, one of the things that, you know, in addition to the sustainability issue that I talked about before, is that it's as simple as that if the organization trusts you to doing some work. Very simple. Right. If the organization, your superiors, your manager, whoever is this, if they absolutely trust you, boss, if I give it to Ankur Varma, Suraj Kumar Bera, or I give it to Nancy, and it will get done. Simple. That in itself is a major asset. And believe you me, it'll, you know, so of course, people talk about soft skills, people talk about, you know, multiple other skills, you know, big data analytics, and all of that is important marketing, whether you want to go to digital agency, whether you want to make a career, uh, let's say, uh, you know, in operations and supply chain and, you know, Six Sigma and this certification. Now, all of these things are important, but, you know, many a times career success you know, of course, in addition to you doing an MBA, it's about very simple things in life. And one of the things is that, can you be trusted with a job? Okay. Uh, can your parents trust you that your parents give Ribu uh, Pajni's, you know, something to do? And Ribu ne kar diya. At the end of the day, you know, it gets it done, right? His mother doesn't have to tell him 10 times, Ribu, have you done it? Have you done it? And same with organizations. So if organizations trust you, that'll, you know, uh, contribute significantly to your long-term uh, career success. Of course, you know, I have, uh, you know, other people who are lined up, so I'll not keep it very long. Of course, we are open to taking questions at a later point in time. Our MBA is, of course, is a quality two-year postgraduate program exclusively designed to equip people like you, okay, with the right knowledge, skill set, mindset, uh, thereby providing you a strong and robust foundation uh, for a successful career. I can assure you, that this MBA program will help you develop the relevant skills, provide in-depth knowledge. Uh, but then, you know, you need to work beyond that. You need to talk to your mentors. You need to talk to your faculty members, your area chair, your you know, program heads to understand and to solve that mindset thing, okay? Which is crucially important, right? Uh, so I would like to, of course, assure you that as part of a world-ranked university, we'll make every effort to make sure that you get a, uh, top education uh, experience as part of this MBA program. Uh, Professor Sunita is the program head of this two-year MBA. And, uh, you know, she would get in touch with you at an appropriate time, uh, you know, once you move closer uh, to August 2022. 
you become part of the program. There are well-laid processes by which you can get clarifications. Of course, there are multiple uh, sessions planned by Vikram and his team, uh, you know, for uh, for you. So feel free at some point in time, maybe you know, Vikram can and we can you know invite you to campus so that I can talk to you in a you know auditorium and I can you know handle sessions live. I think you know that will be great. But of course, we'll wait for the you know this uh, COVID situation to improve even further. But that is something which I'm sure we would be able to do before, uh, you know, sooner rather than later. So uh, on that note, uh, thank you very much uh, for, uh, you know, coming to this session. I'll hand it over now to Vikram. I think, you know, our Vice Dean Academics, uh, Professor Brijesh Kumar now would like to speak to you. So uh, over to you, uh, Brijesh. So thank you, man. Thank you very much. Uh, so I... I, earlier, I thought that I'm going to talk much about the program, but I thought that Vice Chancellor has covered a lot and Mank has covered uh, a lot. So, uh, so what I intend to do uh, uh, in this session that I will briefly, and Sunita, thankfully, she's here after the just completing the class, she's back. Uh, so in, in the five to 10 minutes, I'm going to talk briefly about what is this MBA program? We, we have a certain uh, expectation, certain thinking that what is going to be, and what as a business school, at a, Vice Chancellor has explained about multidisciplinarity, about the uh, exchange opportunity. So I will try, try, I will try to discuss that, what this MBA program and what kind of skill sets you are going to acquire through this program. So just, just to give you a brief, brief background, um, uh, I am, I've joined Jindal Global Business School in year 2010, uh, and I'm probably here from last 12 years. Uh, and before joining Jindal Global Business School, I did my PhD from IIM Ahmedabad and then tech from IIT Kharagpur and BTEC from some central university. So being engineer and then I did uh, my PhD uh, in finance because I love data. And then after completing, rather than going to the investment banking or, or industry, I joined uh, Academia and I'm very happy to be a part of the Jindal Global Business School and the part of the MBA program. And as you know, that MBA program has started in year 2010. So I've seen the, how the MBA program at JGBS has evolved over time, right? So when we talk about the MBA program, and, and of course uh, we know that, okay, if I'm going to do the MBA program, I'm going to do a specialized in marketing. I'm going to do a specialization in finance. That is very, very important, right? So as a, as a student, as a, as a MBA uh, student, of course, that is the important thing that you are going to have the domain knowledge, which we call it domain knowledge, that you are going to have the understanding of the different disciplines of the management. But at the same time, if you look into the different articles which has been written about what kind of skill sets are required in a future manager, a lot of articles have been written about it. And if you look at those, so it talks other than the domain knowledge, because that is given. So if you look at our curriculum, and we don't have much time to discuss about this, but I want you to think when you are doing the MBA program, right? So what kind of skill sets you are going to acquire? So one of the very important skill sets and our curriculum also evolve around this is, which we call it the technological agility. So when you are, it's a kind of skill set, it's not about the finance or marketing, right? So if you look at the way the technology has changed the businesses, Right. So now for most of the things we are talking about the AI, we are talking about the blockchain, we are talking about the cryptocurrency, right? Even in the budget, we have seen that the new policies are going to come. So the technology has changed the way the business are being done. So whenever you are doing your MBA program, it's very, very important for you to understand the different technological emerging technology, which are there in the business, right? So this is very important skill also about the data, be it finance, be it marketing, how you are going to get the data, how do you know different kind of tools by which you can analyze the data and you can make inferences because the, the kind of being in online kind of a system, a lot of things are being done. And so the technological agility is very, very important. That's going to be a very important part of our curriculum, which you will see, right? The another very important aspect, which uh, Professor Mank has talked about and by chance has also talked about is the, uh, 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 the global citizenships. Right. So we typically we talk about how you are going to deal with the local businesses, how you are going to deal with the 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 uh, the foreign businesses, how you are going to appreciate the social and the ethical sensitivity. So these things are also becomes very important for a manager. So not only the subject, but these things you need to acquire when you are doing your two years at a business school. 
right? Business communication is very important, right? To all of us, irrespective of what you do, until or unless you are going to communicate to the different stakeholders, your, your job is not done. Until or unless you are able to communicate to the customers, you have a very good product, right? And then you have done a very good analysis of the data. But until you are able to convince to your uh, different stakeholders, your managers, your boss, your CEOs, it's not being done. So if you look at the courses which you have, in most of the courses, you have to either write a report or you have to give a presentation. The whole idea is that not only the understanding of the concept is important, but how you communicate. So that kind of skill sets you are also going to acquire in our MBA program, right? The one of the very very important skill set which we call. I mean, please uh, forgive me for the jargons I am quoting, but these are the important skill sets. Uh, which you will see everywhere. Another important, which I'm talking about, the problem solving skill, right? So problems, whenever you're going to the business, doesn't matter how many case studies you do in your uh, MBA program, right? You, When you are doing a job, you would be given a different kind of context and you have to solve the problem. So the important skill sets, which we talk about is the critical thinking. That means given a situation, how you are going to, uh, uh, understand a problem, how you are going to come, come up with a problem, right? Once you have a problem, how you are going to collect the data? So be it finance or marketing, or organization behavior or operations, these kind of skill set is very much appreciated in the industry, right? And even most of, let's say, if you're looking for a consulting job, probably you know that first of all, they have some kind of aptitude test. Why they do that kind of uh, test? Because you've already done CAT or MAT or other examination. But that kind of aptitude is very much required when you are looking for a job in any industry. So that is, is very, very important. And that you learn through the courses, that you learn through the different pedagogy, different uh, teaching methods, which we use, right? So these, and of course the leadership, and I'm not going to talk about the leadership, of course, as a manager, you are working in a team, you are uh, going to lead a team. So that kind of skill sets you are going to acquire from the beginning and how you are going to acquire it, you are going doing lot many internships. So in our business school, Professor Raj clearly said that two internships are integral component of our MBA program. So first semester, once you complete your first semester, you are going for a winter internship program, which is six to eight weeks uh, program. And all the internships are organized by our OCS department, Office of Career Services. The whole idea is once you learn some skill set or the domain knowledge, are you able to implement those skill sets in an actual context, right? So you go for a winter internship, and of course it is uh, mentored by the faculty member. So you are always have a faculty members, so you can reach out to him or her and take the advice how you are going to do that, right? Similarly, you also have a summer internship. So purposefully, very consciously, earlier it was that you want internships like the other B schools that you complete your one year, go for internships, when you are in the second year, you are actually preparing for the placements. But when we talk about the experiential uh, exercises, experiential learning, internships plays a very, very important role. And both in our undergraduate as well in the postgraduate program, we have an integral role. And there you start working in a team because leadership is a big word, right? But how you communicate with the team members. So most of the courses, you will have a group study, right? How you are dealing with the group, how you are, you are, you are come, uh, getting things done. Let's say you have given a project, right? So all students should work in a project. So that other than those kind of finance and marketing and uh, organization behavior or business analytics, that is there for sure. That is there for all the program uh, in the all the years. But these kind of we are focusing a lot on the on that when we are designing the program, when we are designing the curriculum, when we are designing the our uh, pedagogy. Right. So very briefly, the kind of pedagogy we use because some of you are coming from the uh, undergraduate uh, BBA or or uh, BTEC. So here you will find a little difference the way we deliver programs, right? And of course, Mayang said and Professor Ra said, and I'm really, really very proud of, I'm here from last 10 years. I'm very proud of the colleagues I have. So we have around 110 faculty members coming from the topmost institute in the India and across the world. And why this is important, right? Because not only they are doing research and you would be exposed to the cutting edge research, but it is also important because you have a subject you have a teaching methods, but who is actually involved in delivering those kind of lectures? Who would, be, who would be discussing in the classes? So that the role of faculty member is very, very crucial. 
and that is why professor raj also so this is very very uh, Im, uh, important distinctive feature of the business school so we have around 110 faculty members coming across seven areas and one of the reasons why we have around 150 electives right because of those faculty members those who are actually offering those courses in their respective domain right so those those are the very very and in terms of the pedagogy we use something called case methodology so it's not like the lecture based that you are coming to the class and faculty member is writing on the board and you are learning certain concepts no that's not gonna gonna happen right so you would be given cases or caselets before coming to the class you are reading the cases and through the discussion in the class facilitated by the faculty members you are learning different concepts and different skill sets so that is the typical pedagogy we use for uh, dealing with most of the courses we are also very much using the experiential exercises like some of the courses like some of the skill sets like uh, team building the, like the ethical sensitivity right so these kind of skill sets you do it through the experiential exercises that means you are doing some kind of group activity in a class so the a particular class is not about cases it's not about uh, the lectures it's about you are doing some kind of exercises and through those exercises we are learning you learn different skill sets so that is very much in, uh, included in our program and the courses like organization behavior the courses like market research and others where we use these kind of experiential exercises the third very important uh, uh, pedagogy which we use is the simulation so we have a very uh, uh, very uh, important course called capstone which is the kind of simulation exercise which you are going to do in the fourth semester because that in that through that simulation exercises, you are taking the decision related to the, all the areas. It's not only about the finance. So we have different simulation. Let's say you are doing a course, elective course like art of investing. So probably we are not opening, you are not opening the DMIT account and actually doing the trading, but you have the simulated uh, platform through which you learn. So these are the new pedagogy, which is, uh, which is evolved and which what we believe is very, very important to learn those kind of uh, 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 skill sets. So, uh, I mean, uh, only few things about the MBA program and, and, and Banks very clearly said the MBA program is not about the courses. It's not about the, it's not only about the courses and uh, specialization, but one of the unique opportunity what we have at, at, at MBA that you can specialize in two specialization, right? So two domains. So let's say the first year we do very basic core courses, right? So you do understand financial accounting, uh, organization behavior, marketing. So the first year you are not exposed to the elective courses. You do basics of uh, foundation of the management courses. But when you go to the second year, you have an option to specialize in two areas. So let's say if I'm a student, I want to specialize in marketing and finance. So you may like to take the elective courses from the finance, as well as from the marketing. And of course, you can get two majors, right? So this is again, a very, very unique opportunity because doing those elective and those majors, you can signal the market better that, okay, I am more specialized, I'm specialized in finance and marketing, and I'm more fit for, let's say, a banking job, right? I'm, I've done some kind of analytics, so, and I'm specializing in marketing. So I, I don't know, and I, I don't only understand marketing, but also have an understanding of, of analytics. So that kind of unique opportunity you have. And of course, uh, I'm not going to talk more about the international because of course you have those kind of uh, uh, international opportunity in terms of the uh, sort immersion, in terms of the uh, semester exchange program and as well as the dual degree. The last point which I uh, uh, want to uh, very briefly discuss about the interdisciplinarity. And of course, uh, uh, Professor Raj discussed about that. And I had I have a list, but uh, in the positive of time, I'm not able to show it to that. So our MBA students are, are, are taking a lot of courses offered by the other schools. So we have the difference. And, and I just to give you an example, how is going to augment your knowledge, right? So we you do the consumer behavior, right? Let's say if I want to specialize in marketing, so I'm doing a courses on digital marketing, consumer behavior and uh, uh, brand management, B2B marketing. But you may also like the courses from, uh, from uh, called consumer psychologies offered by the different school, 
if let's say if i want to specialize in finance and i have done merger and acquisition in my business school and i know valuation but there is a course in the law school which talks about the laws and the regulation related to the mna so if i want to augment the knowledge i can take those kind of electives which is offered by the different schools and this is very very unique to the jindal global business school and as uh, uh, vikram also told we have around 400 electives coming across different uh, 11 and 12 schools and you will be given a opportunity that you go through the courses and whichever you want you can include in your electives right so that is again a uh, very important aspects of the interdisciplinarity which we not only say only in terms of having schools but actually our students are getting benefited by taking those courses and when it comes to the placements or otherwise also they are very much uh, by looking at the recruiters are very happy and encouraged by looking at the interdisciplinary approach to the education to the problem solving so i will stop here i'm sorry i'm uh, uh, i've taken some um, much more time but it, if you want and if you have any um, 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 uh, concern related to the academics related to the program uh, related to the internships and others um, i mean we are very happy to uh, help you in clearing those doubts so i will stop here and i will hand it over to vikram thank you everyone thank you for your patient listening thank you thank you brijesh thanks a lot welcome back once again friends <clears throat> i personally feel mba is something which is a masters degree we all know we all can take risk in graduation which college we do what degree we choose but mba is something where 99% of us and do definitely go in for academics and therefore it is very important to choose your mba college very wisely as i was telling you something which many of you and even i always wanted to have a clarity is all about what kind of roi is these are the jargons which you people use sir what is the roi i always tell students ki look roi is not something which you get when you get a job offer after completing your fourth semester it spans across 10 15 years of your life and for that you need to understand are you utilizing your two years over here or anywhere the way it is required by the future are you future ready what sort of skills do you need somebody was asking me sir do you provide any foreign internships see for us as our middle name says op jindal global university it is very important for every student and parent to understand what is the meaning of this word global and as an mba student what advantage it will derive for me for an undergrad student it will be very different but as an mba what i would get out of it we have four foreign languages option where the students pick from you have mandarin you have french you have spanish you have arabic one one of our students in mba from 2015 17 batch his name is anshul sindwani we all live in a digital world you can go and google he is right now in dubai he started his job he got placed with a company which was in real estate called as square yards he got placed he got a package of around 15 lakhs at that time and last year in dubai itself he launched his own company and while he was doing his mba over here he chose to study arabic as a language he never thought of it how learning this language might professionally help him but see some decisions which you take do have a positive impact always you are not here coming simply to get an attendance or an 8 out of 8 cgpa or a job of 10 12 14 15 lakhs 
you have a very big canvas to play you all are adults you are 18 19 years of age you are investing 16 to 17 lakhs of hard earned money of your parents are you doing your best to utilize it some students do not evaluate a campus on the basis of how big the campus is somebody will offer you 80 acres somebody will offer you 90 acres some campus will be of 100 acres when you graduate you will not take that 10 acres or 20 acres along with you what you take with you is the learning what the faculty members will bring into the class you all have aspirations that i should study from a good faculty but definitely the other person also has certain expectations from you and i told you everything is open we are an open book and that is why i always insist all of you should join our official facebook and linkedin page that is very very important for you to connect and know what is happening inside the campus if you ask me this question sir do you guarantee me a job i would simply say you are sitting at a wrong place you don't need to invest 16 lakhs go and pay 1 lakh rupee to some consultant and he can find you a job don't take my words in a wrong way but we are here to not limit you for 10 12 14 lakhs we have students who went for an ms dual degree abroad we have soham and uh, professor brijesh would definitely know him he went to university of texas to do his ms and he is working currently in sales force the next series of sessions which i have planned for all of you is on the different aspects the five different aspects of why jgbs why you should come to here if you decide that i want to come to jindal university jindal global school for mba you should have that answer you i will not give that answer professor brijesh will not give that answer and you have students as live examples when covid started those students who did online education they did not see the campus those students will now come only for 2 to 3 months imagine from that cohort itself there are students who have gone abroad pursuing their ms pursuing their semester exchange getting placement also and last but not the least because i am not an academician i was a student like you i personally feel small is beautiful why small is beautiful and how it is relevant right now over here is because you are not fighting in a big cohort of 300 or 400 or 500 mba students jgbs for the last 2 years we have only two sections last year we selected 90 students we made two sections this year we will make 100 students 50 each two sections or maybe 110 two sections the standard size is 60 of a class ab mujhe ek baat batao i'll talk in hindi 100 logo se ladke apne liye placement ya study abroad ki ek opportunity nikalna zyada aqalmandi aur easy hai या 400 और 500 लोगों में फाइट करके टार्जन बन के दिखाना है किसी को अप्लाई योर माइंड डू नॉट ट्राई टू अननेसेसरी इंक्रीज द कंपटीशन एंड एवरीबॉडी इज नॉट योर कंपटीटर आल्सो आई फील वेरी बैड व्हेन आई सी स्टूडेंट्स गेटिंग डीमोटिवेटेड सर मेरे तो 200 नंबर आए सर एंड मैडम सो व्हाट यार हु सेज दैट विद 200 और 220 यू कैन नॉट रॉक द फ्यूचर and you would be surprised and you would be shocked to know what you think does not exist on the other side till day we do not believe in the process of filtering you know there is a difference between filtration and selection i have to select 100 students i selected 90 students last year imagine the jgbs management they are not saying that you did 90 last year this year we will make 200 imagine 
and the best part is those 90 students who came to the class last year i will be making an interaction of all of you with them also they came from 22 different states of the country that is the learning the person who is sitting on left may be from ahmedabad the person who is sitting on right may be from chennai and you are all live example that is what jgbs is and that is why we face so much of attention we, you will never find a single one page or a quarter page advertisement of jgbs aap batao aapne koi advertisement dekha kisi newspaper mein aap kabhi nahi dekhoge kisi magazine mein nahi dekhoge students come and ask me sir what is your ranking in india i say beta you should expand your thought process talk about global my canvas where i want to see myself is not india rankings and all these are you are my ranking you are live ranking yeah i do not want any newspaper and that is why i believe in showing you the mirror okay look this is what future is if you have these skills go ahead if you think you do not have these skills scale up yourself improve your communication improve your personality improve your confidence because at the end of the day when you will sit for a job you just need one seat you should not be bothered that if a company is coming how many students are sitting for placements or how many students will a particular company take and that is how your coaching centers who are opening like shops they train you they make you believe that if you are 70 percentile in cat or if in case you have an nmat score or mat score of 70 you are gone where it is written that if i have got 70 percent in 12th i cannot do better in life or where it is written that if you have got 90 percent in cat you will definitely end up i have till date i'm telling you i have till date rejected more than 60 students in the mba interview imagine to select 100 we have already rejected 60 and why you would be surprised you would think if you are coming from nmat score the people who think oh nmat 230 240 is a very good score i have to wait i have to 10 half of the motivation is already down without giving the interview you are down because the society have made you feel ki yaar 210 215 ka score to kuch hota hi nahi and i have rejected as high score of 243 in nmat and you would be surprised you would think sir why oh 243 is a very big score it is just a number friends your attitude plays the most important thing because when you do all those things it comes over here in your head and you become arrogant and an mba needs to have an empathy these are not words these are the experiences of our career so do not hesitate to ask questions and we can definitely all guarantee you that your investment will not go into waste but for next two years just give me two things from your life one is your commitment and second is your consistency if you are giving these two things to us you see where you will be after two years and that is a remarkable example you talk about diversity you talk about experience one third of the student come with an average work experience of 22 to 24 months the male female ratio is roughly 40 uh, 48 and 52 percent and that is what we look for if you are a fresher like somebody is writing if you are a fresher you don't have to worry so what because if i am having a work experience for two years definitely the recruiter is expecting something new we recently launched a one year global mba program in business analytics i don't know whether you are aware or not this was launched on 27th and because we are an institution of eminence that is specially for working professionals those who have 3 years 4 years of experience those who want to make their career in the field of business analytics for them 
it is a very very focused program of one year mba it is an mba it is not a pgpm or a pgdbm whatever it is imagine that is the vision the associations which we have 80 plus collaborations with five continents throughout in your resume for the next 40 years if you are able to go and have that ms you have an ms from let's say university of new brunswick canada and an mba from jgbs when you sit in the interview your brand you are yourself a different brand altogether so when you have to invest 2 years invest in that college which has a possibility to give you more don't limit yourself that is all from my side if you have anything please ask us questions it's already 8 o'clock we started at 6:30 it's already 90 minutes gone let's open for question and answers for the next 5 10 minutes if you have anything so just a query like me as a fresher what skills is the college like expecting in me before i entered into this course obviously you will provide me with different learnings and skills but obviously college is also expecting something from students right so what are those skills which you know the college management is seeing in the students once i to- think i have my three uh, colleagues uh, right from dean vice dean and the program head because they are the people so i would request them to directly share this reply with you rajesh would you like to sure sir sure, no problem so uh, there were very good question and uh, i was discussing this question in one of the talk i am i was having so first of all uh, i mean uh, you have already cleared your competitive examination you have cleared your uh, undergraduate so first of all need not to worry about uh, the courses or the the skill sets you need to have before coming to the mba program so first of all relax i mean because why i am saying when you are coming to the program the program is very rigorous i don't want to uh, uh, scare you by doing by saying this but it's very rigorous so if you think that i am coming from the let's say engineering background do i need to do accounting no don't do that right if let's say somebody is coming from accounting background and saying oh my god i don't know the stat so can i can i do some stat on mathematics don't do that because the program is designed in a way that even if you don't have a background you will be doing those courses and you will be succeeding uh, uh, there in the program however let's say because i talked about some of the skill sets which you required so let's say because we are dealing with lot many case studies we you are going to deal with lot of presentation and excel and other things so let's say if you are comprehension skills are good you will feel less specialized when you are dealing with the cases when you are reading 30 and 40 pages every day and coming to the class right and let's say because you are to deal with the excel and powerpoint so if you acquire some knowledge about those kind of skill sets that will help you in dealing with the mba program so this is the very short answer i uh, want to give and professor mank is also here so if you want to add something thank you thank you so much sir no problem yeah brijesh uh, thank you very much uh, for that i think uh, you know uh, rebo please understand that an mba student what an mba graduate is expected to do you know apelle let's try to understand that and you know i dealt with a part of it in right. the initial session now mba students and you know if you look at your own career aspiration then i'll try to answer what we look into the mba candidate part of it which you know brijesh has already mentioned right so mba grads certainly we are preparing you to be the leaders entrepreneurs managers in the organizations organizations and i you know as i said i i told you know i discussed part of it before also organizations pay a premium for good quality mba candidates why why because you know they have problems to be solved right and they want the mba managers to solve those problems for you abhi ankur varma rebu as individuals also you will have 10 problems i'll tell you what what are the problems you have make a list you'll make 1 2 3 4 okay less pocket money okay i have to study a lot okay uh, there is a lot of air pollution <laughs> 1 2 3 4 organizations are in a similar state there of course the problems are much more wicked much more complex they need people to solve those problems and the reason why mba candidates are given a premium is because the idea is that you know they come with the required skill set to be able to help organizations solve those problems now when we are hiring the you know mba graduates for our you know program 
what we are looking at through your CV, your background, your profile, interview, you know, in our mind, we are thinking about three, four major areas. Now, one, of course, is your analytical thinking, okay? Uh, given a situation, can you solve a problem? Okay. okay, right? Second thing we are thinking is, can you articulate your thoughts properly? Many people can't, by the way. Many people with great degrees, they can't, right? So given a situation, are you able to articulate it in the minimum possible words? And are you able to communicate your thoughts? Okay. There's a game, game that, you know, many, uh, uh, you know, these workshops play where there's a, you know, a, a line of uh, human beings. So one person says something in somebody else's ear, then it gets passed on. And by the time it reaches the 10th guy, okay, the, the entire meaning has been completely distorted. And the whole idea about that is of communication gap. So when you talk about communication gap, it's really important. So that wouldn't happen if everybody is able to articulate thoughts in a very clear, uh, you know, precise manner, right? And that doesn't happen. The third important, you know, uh, trait we are looking at is your leadership skills, okay? Your team uh, work skills. Many people say I'm a team player. They are actually not because they can't work in a team, okay? And that's, that is a skill that you have to develop, okay? In a cricket team, not everyone, if you hire 11 MS Dhonis, that team can't do anything. Because they can only be one captain, right? So you need team players also. If you have all the leaders in a team, it won't work. So sometimes, even if you're a leader, you have to delegate yourself to become a team player because the team wants it that way, okay? We are looking for communication skills. We are looking for, you know, overall personality, okay? So there are multiple things we are looking to, uh, you know, uh, as part of your, you know, candidature. And the key reason we are doing it, Ribhu, is that MBA grads, okay, when they go to the organization, obviously, in the profiles would differ whether you're in marketing research or operation supply chain, whether you're in finance, accounting, whether in analytics, obviously, you know, that would differ. But, but broadly, you know, these are the skills that organizations are looking for. And that's what, in a way, we are also looking for in the MBA candidates. Does that answer your question, Ripple? Yeah, thank you so much, sir, both of you, for answering this question in detail. And I'll make sure that I work on these skills and then be prepared and he- help your institution to grow through my... I have mind. no doubt, absolutely, Ribu. We are looking for excellent candidates like you. So I have no doubt that, you know, you'll do your contribution. Thank you so much. Uh, Thank eagerly you. look forward. Who else? So Vikram, there's a question in the chat box. Uh, Neil has asked this question that can I do marketing or entrepreneurship specialization as a semester exchange student uh, from JSOM University of Texas and Dallas. So I just uh, want to answer that uh, question. So uh, uh, Neil, whenever, let's say you are opting for any semester exchange, typically in the second year, then you have an option to take courses uh, from that foreign uh, university. So you have an option to take marketing, you have an option to take finance, depending upon different courses offered by that uh, institute. So there is no um, uh, problem in taking the courses which you want, whether it's a marketing specialization or entrepreneur, uh, entrepreneurship specialization, right? Once you take those courses, and then when the credits are being transferred, then ultimately you are getting the major out of it, right? So the major of either entrepreneurship or marketing or finance is nothing but doing certain credits, which you do in a particular specialization. So to just to answer your question, yes, if you are doing entrepreneurship courses or LTX courses in our foreign university as a semester exchange, you will be getting the major in that particular area. So that's not a problem. I also see, you know, Professor Sunita, who's the program head of the two year yes. MBA. Hi, hi, Sunita. Hi, Sunita. Hi, 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 Mank. Hi, all. Yep. Great to see you here. Uh, you know, I think uh, we've been talking a lot. So maybe you know, want to say a quick, you know, address and say hello to all the MBA candidates. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much for that, uh, Mank. Uh, uh, just to start with, because uh, Rajesh has almost uh, uh, covered it, uh, I'm sorry I had to miss a major part of uh, what you have presented because just then I finished the class, then I came here. Uh, as we Rajesh, understand you had a class, so you know. <laughs> yeah, because uh, that's something uh, which 
all of us want uh, not to miss uh, any part of it. So uh, thanks to Brajesh, uh, he has covered uh, most of it uh, because uh, I have worked around a little on curriculum and pedagogy and he has actually he has uh, covered it all uh, in a comprehensive manner. That's why I thought, uh, let me not venture more onto it. Uh, to start with, to answer this question of Neil, a little more precisely because uh, uh, it's needed. Like we have to set a tone. It's not like uh, it, like getting into JGBS is not a gate pass into University of Texas Dallas, right? That's something which you have to keep in mind. Uh, we will provide all the opportunities in year one. Uh, you can make use of all the facilities, courses, skill development, and you have to make yourself worthy enough. Because the thing is, these are uh, some of the top schools in the world, uh, whatever uh, with which we have these types. So they also want to have best candidates to come to their uh, uh, place and, uh, uh, you know, uh, maybe they would have, uh, uh, some of my colleagues would have spoken about few of our students. They become brand ambassadors for the universities globally. Now, they that's the level of uh, candidates they also want. So you have to be focused from the very beginning. Like when you join the GBS, join with an objective of, okay, my goal is to go there. Now, maintain your great grades, keep all the skills updated, uh, develop on your competencies, you have a problem, approach people. There are so many people around here to help on whatever aspect you want to uh, have a discussion with or maybe a development on. Uh, when you keep doing that, surely the moment uh, interviews are going to be conducted, you will be one of the top candidates and no one is going to stop you from joining UTD, uh, doing some of the entrepreneurship courses. But you are the person to reach there. We give the like all of us try to give you the brilliant platform that is possible from where you can take on, but it's you to walk. That's something uh, which I must say because uh, this is the time we are uh, nominating. Yeah, students uh, they they are uh, coming up with different kind of. At the end of the day, uh, when you are a candidate who is suitable enough. None of us can stop you, and we will be very happy to uh, maybe if if. 10 of you want to go, if 15 of you want to go or 20 of you want to go, we'll be happily sending, sending you people. That's something uh, uh, which we can do. And uh, I think there is a question related to language. Uh, uh, when you're going to do a language course, it's not a, a credited kind of, a, 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 like especially in MBA program, we, as we are more focused on uh, business and uh, in, in you training as a business manager and are an as an uh, entrepreneur, we uh, give a lot of emphasis to the content part and you have uh, two huge internships and one non-credited uh, like non internship. These things itself will take a huge chunk. So it's not going to be credited, but you have an option of learning uh, foreign language. That's something which you can happily use. Um, I'm not sure if I have answered the question completely. If there is anything else, uh, you would please ask. So now, who's the next one to break the ice? Ankur, you are on the receiving end. Uh, you do not have any questions today. Good evening, sir. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, uh, Good evening. Yes, sir. As I typed my question in the chat box. So my question okay. was just that uh, during my interviews, I uh, as I interacted to the teachers, uh, I asked regarding the exchange program for studies. Some part of MBA I will be doing in a foreign university. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, a semester or anything. So uh, the teacher told me that it is not applicable for everyone. You have to qualify some uh, special, you have to get some special achievements or you have good grades or anything. So I just wanted to know what all I need to achieve in that case, if I want to do some part of my MBA in a foreign university or a country. 
Ankur, let me quickly answer that question. So what happens is that, uh, you know, this is a competitive process. So first of all, okay. So first thing is that, you know, these opportunities which are available, you know, uh, they are competitive in nature. Now, they these opportunities come in various uh, sort of, you know, forms. Uh, there is a summer program. We have a six months, you know, uh, semester exchange. Uh, there is a dual degree, uh, right? So there are short and long term. So it's not just one program per se. Okay. So they come in, you know, different forms. That's number one. Number two is that, you know, uh, the other way to divide, uh, you know, these, uh, these partnerships is that, some of them are free and some of them are paid, right? Now, because of our, you know, collaborations, you get access to some free paid, you know, free seats. Now, as you can imagine, you know, these free seats are limited in number and therefore they are competitive in nature. We have a very well laid out process. It's IT enabled, people bid for it, right? And you'll get all the information when you become part of GTPS. But a lot of these free, positions in our you know foreign uh, universities as part of our collaboration they are competitive in nature and therefore you know your your marks come into the picture uh, there is an interview that is scheduled uh, you know in front of the panel so you have to give that interview so how you because understand that you also are ambassadors to these uh, you know countries and universities so we would also like to make sure that people and students who go there, you know, they are representing GDPs. They are part of the GDPs family. And therefore, this, this entire. So it's an IT-enabled, very transparent, well-laid-out process. We have a dedicated office in GDPs. But yes, for the free seats, it's competitive in nature, as you can, you know, obviously imagine. Uh, uh, but generally speaking, for paid seats, we have a much more leeway, right? So I hope that answers your question, uh, Ankur. Yes, sir. I'm um, very open with that answer. Uh, I, if I opt for that, I will make sure that I transform myself in a better person so that I represent well. Uh, Absolutely. And I'll tell you what, you know, I, you know, there was a discussion earlier and I, I don't know how much time we have. I think, you know, we have already exceeded the time limit by many yes. minutes, but just a quick thing. Uh, because somebody was asking, you know, what's really the advantage, you know, how does it really help? So I took MBA students to Wharton B School, you know, uh, some years ago, right? And I'll just tell you that. So these MBA students, you know, you go to a foreign country. So it's not, to, of course, you know, you experience uh, the top B school in the world. So that in itself is a great experience. So obviously, you learn in the classroom. But outside classroom, from the moment you, you know, hop on that aircraft, okay? you And obviously, you know, you're going from here. Uh, you know, to, to Wharton, to Pennsylvania, chances are that, you know, it will be a break of flight. So either you go to states, uh, New York, and then go from there, or you go via Middle East, or you go via one of the cities in Europe. And you're immediately, you know, learning about the, the hub and spoke model of airlines. Why would airlines do that? Why not a direct flight? Right? So your learning starts the moment you hop onto that aircraft. Okay? Uh, you learn about the business model. Right? Now, you go to a foreign country, you learn about their different culture. You understand, you know, in a fat world, you know, that's becoming increasingly important because, you know, whichever organization you go to, chances are they'll have a foreign client. And therefore, they will need people who can deal with those foreign clients. And therefore, any, you know, uh, international exposure is very welcome. So all of these add up. It's a, it's a wonderful experience that people get. As Vikram was saying, many of our students, it's a life, you know, transition that they have made. They've done these programs. They now they have citizenship, work visas. Somebody is launching their own startup. Somebody has got you know a, a, a green card, stuff like that. And many people come back, and that's their choice. But what I'm saying is, it's a life-altering experience, uh, you're right? And it's it's extremely important for many people. Hope that answers, Ankur. Yes, sir. Very well. Thank you very much. Great. So Vikram, what do we do? I mean, do we continue or? Uh, do we have a, more questions we can answer? I think we we have five minutes, friends. If you have anything, you please ask us. Otherwise, in the chat box specifically, I have requested my colleague to share the links of our official LinkedIn page and the Facebook page where I would like all of you to be present. That would give you every information. You don't have to look any corner for knowing what is happening in terms of 
internship or what is happening in terms of placement what professor sunita just now mentioned about she is in the process of shortlisting candidates for next years study abroad who who have gone where and you may connect there are a series of webinars which will be done like this in the coming days that will give you the confidence on why jgbs you are our ambassadors we want you to utilize your next few months effectively there will be lot of master classes which are planned professor mayank is doing a lot of things to help you gel with the pedagogy and the system of jgbs so as and when time will come you we will be sharing certain emails with you you plan to come to the campus we would be happy to host you maybe i am planning something where i would like to have an open day when many of you can come together last year we did it the same way just before the covid started and the lockdown happened so you can come you be in touch with kalpana ma'am or amit sir who have been the regular touch points for all of you and uh, that's it from our side all the best this was a first session yes definitely venkatesh uh, i would request you to please mute yourself sir i have a question uh, yes sir well um, please uh, for sir uh, in the dual degree there is any is there any requirement a student needs to fulfill or uh, can anybody apply for dual degree so uh, mai would you like to i think we have already answered this question but maybe something is missing yeah who is this uh, can you please introduce yourself can't sir my name is varun nair ah. yeah and uh, my question is in dual degree specifically yeah, yeah i got degree. your question i got i got your question varun so you know as i said let me you know repeat it's a good question uh, and maybe vikram we should call all of them whoever have registered for the program officially i think whenever it's convenient and you know covid situation allows we should call them in campus and you know we should need to have some sort of a you know live interaction with them i would very much like that uh because obviously in online has certain handicaps so you know that would really help so just to answer this question i think what happens is for a dual degree or for that matter a free semester exchange as i said there are certain uh you know criteria it's a competitive process right and therefore we need to apply filters to make sure that you know uh people uh you know who have been doing well who have been putting an effort to the program you know they are so there are multiple filters starting with your gpa starting with the interview process as is the case with any of the admission process it's a transparent it enabled process so okay so if you if let's say we float certain position if you are interested in that position you apply for it we shortlist candidates then there is an interview panel uh then you know we ask questions based on that uh we make a list right so the person who is on top of the list they get the first choice okay and then they say okay i want to go to canada and they select a particular position which is available then we come to the next candidate and then you know so that's the way we uh, you know follow that now for for certain positions this you know the 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 criteria might differ a bit so i think rather than going into specifics you know i hope you understand the overall you know the the schema here the overall process is exactly that of course you know uh, after we nominate the candidates our foreign partners also you know have to uh, okay that so it's not like you know we nominate and you know they say okay okay send all of them so they get the profile of the candidates and they also have to confirm that okay we are okay with ankur varma and ribu pajni okay please send them in once we nominate so there are multiple processes it's a serious business it's a life altering experience okay as i said you know people you know for them it's almost a life you know pathway and a career pathway so uh so what we can possibly do is once we have that live interaction we can discuss more about it but i hope you got the overall gist of how this process actually happens yes sir thank you sir great so uh i think you know people want to you know see the campus which i'm really glad it's a beautiful campus uh there is a you know fair bit of construction also going on because we are expanding you know like there is no tomorrow because we are giving so much love and appreciation from every quarter you know every state in india we have 12 schools growing rapidly but then you know it's a beautiful campus you must absolutely visit 
uh, and you know whenever the covid situation you know allows maybe you know sometime late march early april you know we can you know invite them vikram and we need to certainly interact so that will be you know i really look forward to uh, you know that particular opportunity thank you man and just to add to what professor mayeng mentioned you would also be coming not to an ordinary campus this was rated as first rank in the swachhata rankings when we started the jgu campus got the first rank among the cleanest campuses of the country imagine and that happened when we had 6000 students residing with us how big how massive mammoth the campus is if you are fond of sports we have olympic size swimming pool we just got a racing track made not a racing but uh, rather a jogging track made and you would be shocked the cost of that jogging track which has not been used until now by the students is around 55 lakhs the material has been imported from greece these are just very small things the backdrop which you can see behind me and professor sunita this is the main academic block we do not have separate blocks that this is the management school block this is the law school block this entire building if you see it behind me this is the main jgu campus and depending upon your classes we start classes at 8 o'clock and if you ask me sir what time the students sleep see you can see professor brijesh and professor sunita laughing because jgu never sleeps and that is a fact the library during the times it is open 24 hours there is an open room global reading room you are coming to a campus which is totally out of i would say imagination in india because when dr raj witnessed both the sides of the indian education and the western education and when he figured that we all indians are best when it comes to brains you talk about doctors you talk about engineers you talk about ceos you will find the positions by indians then why is it that none of the indian universities come in the top 200 of the world that was the question he had in mind and then he said that yes at an age of 34 imagine we all have all different dreams and he was living in new york with his family he left everything and he came to sonipat and then this university was born it's a vision and we all are so happy because we all have come from across the country and that is why we are here for you we want you to take us in the right gesture understand what is our aspirations from you and you will get every support big or small in terms of finding a connect we want to make you future ready and that is why i told you there are a series of session very soon i will be arranging a session with the alumni how you have to spend your 24 hours in a day over here nobody will ask you that you go and sleep at 10 o'clock you want to sleep go and sleep at 4 o'clock but if you have a morning 8 am class professor sunita will not give you attendance if you come at 8 past 1 that is for sure you have to learn how to manage your time because in your professional career if you are one minute late probably that one minute may cost you very bad you will not be allowed to enter into the office and you will lose half day salary the client who is supposed to meet you may not even want to meet you so there are many things which will make jgbs and which make jgu campus very different please do not hesitate if you have any questions choose the best for you i am not saying jgu is the best but the biggest decision of your life should not be taken in haste do your research properly don't get carried away don't ask any questions relating to placement from any college who can guarantee placement tell me 
can you guarantee me that if you are coming to jgbs you will be among the top 10 students of the class and if you cannot guarantee me how can you expect i guarantee you anything we don't believe in all those things we just want that our students should be prepared for future and we know where the future is because the average age of professor is 38 years imagine the vice chancellor told you his daughter is in class 8 we know where the future is going and that is why we are able to connect so early with our students you have a dream to be taught by an professor from iim you have professor like brijesh but he will not leave you like that you cannot escape because his aspiration because he is a professor from iim he wants something different from you professor sunita might not be interested in your cgpa what she wants is your dedication your class will not end in one and a half hour and that makes jgu a fully residential campus because you are always awake and when you go back you carry those fond memories because as mba you are not coming here for a degree friend you are coming here to make your professional networking you have a person who is a lawyer you have a student who joined the jindal law school and tomorrow when you graduate you come from such a big family where you have so much of professional networking which will help and ease your life that is jgu and that is jgps and that is the biggest advantage of pursuing mba in a university campus as against a stand alone b school i don't have to get any faculty from outside or outsource to teach you electives of law they are all my in house faculty members with that i would like to thank and close the session we had a wonderful time i can see still 38 students are listening and after 2 hours imagine this speaks for the connect what we want to develop with you so i would like to thank my colleagues professor mayank professor brijesh professor sunita our honorable vice chancellor my colleagues from the it team who made it possible admission team my colleagues kalpana and amit have been regularly in touch with you please if you want to visit the campus do not hesitate write to us we would be happy to host you in the campus and then you pave your own journey but do not forget that what purpose you are coming here for connect us on our linkedin page you should know what is happening inside out we are giving you the things but you have to utilize them nothing will come for free you are looking for a good college i am looking for a good student and tomorrow if i shortlist you and you are sitting in the class and if let's say ankur is coming as a recruiter to select he will say sir i will pick up the best so don't worry about your cat and mat mat z percentiles these are just numbers improve your personality communication and confidence sabke paas 24 ghante hain how we are utilizing that 24 hour is determining what we will be doing in future and you have my words if you are confused you have my number stay connected with me thank you all the best and have a good day ahead thank you professor sunita professor brijesh and all my colleagues from jgu and thank you dear students and parents for joining us i look forward to help you and connect with you in campus very soon we will be sending you more information about the next session which i am planning with the seniors and they would guide you more about the study abroad opportunities and their experiences so do not take these sessions lightly because you will never get an opportunity to interact with them because somebody will be joining from us somebody will be joining from canada and they are coming for their juniors what you are witnessing today they witnessed 4 5 years before so listen from the horse's mouth and make your own journey thank you god bless you and have a great evening thank, thank you, you thank, thank you everyone. sir thank you sir Thank you sir